This movie will provide an overview of the Enroute Auto Toolpath process. Enroute Auto Toolpath is a process that allows you to take files from a parametric design software such as KCDW, Cabinet Solutions, RouterCAD, 2020, or even using AutoCAD to create your own layered DXF output. Bringing these DXF files into Enroute's Auto Toolpath interface, which has already been set up with the corresponding toolpaths. So basically you're going to import this, uh, select your, your ATP configuration file with all this information, and then hit the button and you'll create the output. The last step in the process here is just to go and run the jobs. So this is a pretty seamless interface between the cabinet program and outputting to the machine. Let's give you a brief overview how this works. First I'll click my auto toolpath interface button or I can go to the file menu and get there. Uh, I already have this set up but the design application should match the program you're using. Uh, here we'll clear this out of here and, and show you uh, the next step here which would be to load a, a, text, a TXT file that is either an XML file or a comma separated value file that will give you some specific parameters about each of the parts and indicate what their length, width, and thickness are, the material type, and so on. Uh, so I import this, this cut list file. Then I load my saved auto toolpath configuration file. Uh, I'll output some parts using a specific file name and, and an output path, which is right now going to my auto toolpath folder. Uh, let's actually change that to our current install auto toolpath folder. And uh, you know, if we we're going to create output files here, we would have this checked, and that would be part of our ATP. And we'll hit process KCDW. So this is going to take each of these parts, toolpath it based upon the layer name nest everything together that belongs in the same kind of material and then create the output files. Here I have two output files that were created three quarter melamine CNC and auto toolpath test uh, underscore melamine. So we have a three quarter a sheet of three quarter melamine that's required and a sheet of quarter inch melamine. When we said when we hit OK we already have these files ready to cut and uh, we would not have to really do anything further here, but if we want to, we can come in here and make some changes and then re-output the file. Um, another thing we can do here is uh, take a look at the actual part. Now I have a, uh, a layer printout that was for a different sheet here, but this is an example of the type of printout. Uh, it would include a layout of the nested sheet, and it would uh, have the name of the parts and their location on the sheet listed in a list down at the bottom. And we do it this for in this format because if you have a long Y and a short X, then the names tend to print across each other. So this allows us to uh, just use a numbering system to, to determine where all the parts are. So using this as a guide, you can then uh, cut each of these sheets out. And if we do a little bigger job here, we'll, uh, we'll take another look at this. And uh, here we uh, will clear out this job and select a new job. That's actually the same job. Come here and choose the example CNC list. This one has a few more parts to it. The other job just had about seven or eight parts, and this has 51 parts. Uh, you can see we have a bunch of layer names, and when you're doing this auto toolpathing, each part you create is in an individual DXF file. Each geometry within the part is in a different layer name. So what Enroute does is reads the layer names, applies a pre-existing save strategy to each layer name and it allows you to have a second strategy for small parts as defined by a, a tolerance. So anything under a specific tolerance is considered big, anything below it's considered small. Alright, we have a, an ability to make your cut depth uh, 
read off of the files, off of the geometries, and this is the use depth option. And uh, by using depth, we're, we're having the, the parametric program place the contour in a specific Z depth, and we're using that to, to determine the depth of the cut. Um, we also have a tool path, nest together, and output selected here, and we'll explain all those in a different, in a different movie. Uh, the next tab you have to have set up is ordering and nesting. Uh, of course, we always want to do our cutouts last and, and drills first, so we have the ability to set a priority here where strategy is the most important concern, and we're going to output in this drills, then island fills, and offsets. And you can achieve a similar result by, by setting your tool, p your tool order in a specific manner and then choosing tool as the highest priority. So this little area will determine the output uh, order. Now we have some nesting parameters. We've nested things with a pretty close gap to fit as much as possible on the sheet. If you wanted to have more space around the edge or between the parts, you can control that here. And the orientation of the parts, we're, we're orienti orienting it to the middle left. Down here we have our default plate size uh, that is just used for which plate shows up and then route after the job is processed. The final thing here would be to make sure that uh, we have our you know, if we want to create output files, that we'll have that selected. To create a printout of the parts to show where the parts are on each sheet, we would we would click on this part. And if there's label output, we can do that as well. We can also process as a single part for point-to-point -point type operations where you want to cut out each piece separately and then uh, maybe do some types of al alternate programming on it. So you can process everything as a single part, which is mostly something done on point-to-point -point machines. All right, uh, and then finally, the name of the part and where you want to output it to. You know, let's just put uh, test two here. All right, and now we'll process these jobs, which is a, the one that's a little bit bigger, bigger job here. So once again, the program here is reading each of these sev uh, 60 or so DXF files reading each of the layer names of the parts and assigning the appropriate strategy. Some of them get cutouts, some get island fills for internal cutting. Uh, and then once this process is done, each part will be nested together as a single piece with all the other parts. And we're looking to put things that belong on the same material together. So the material type becomes important here. And route at the end of this process will let you know how many sheets you need of each material and we take account take into account this thickness when creating output files. So for instance, if you're sorting at the surfacing at the bottom of the plate uh, or surfacing at the top of the plate, uh, these values, your, your end up cut thickness will be correct. And in, in the case of the bottom of the plate, this specific material thickness is used when determining how much above zero the part needs to go. So uh, it's an important uh, variable when surfacing on bottom of plate. So once we're done here, we'll have the output files, the layer printouts, and an route file that will allow us to uh, to go in there and make changes if needed after this part has this process has been done. All right, so here we get a list of all the output files that were created. Oh, I, uh, I forgot to make that change as to where it's going payment permanent, so it's in a little different directory. And if I hit the OK button here, that'll bring us into the enroute file where if we needed to make a little change, we could do that. All right, now if we come up here to the area where we can see all the layers, we can count these layers and know how much we're going to need of each material. So here we need seven sheets of half inch plywood. We're going to need four sheets of quarter inch plywood. And if we scroll down here to the bottom, we need two sheets of three quarter melamine. Uh, we can also scroll through this list here and see what each of these pieces looks like. And there's our first sheet of three-quarter or quarter-inch ply, 
and then here's the two sheets of three-quarter melamine. So these these files are output and ready to cut, and you have a a layer of output that shows where, where all the parts are, and you can have labeling if you purchase that option. Well, this has been an overview of the Enroute Auto Toolpath functions, and we'll do a little bit more specific information about each of the steps in this process in a separate movie.